the $560,000 two-year-old Colton Gelding Trot the Breeders' Crown continues from Mohawk Raceway at Campbellville, Ontario. Time for the post parade as the final eight horses come out for this $420,000 final. There's Mark O'Mara's owned, trained, and driven firm tribute. Well, how many good horses can you have in one year? And he had uh, Jade Lobel last year and again this year. This Cole, he owns himself, so the money is all his. He's won close to 370000 including that uh, first elimination, or that uh, win in his elimination. Nine wins and 19 starts on the year of Bonefish, two-year-old. He actually bought this horse on a tout from another person who was in the eliminations tonight, and that was uh, Dan Shetler on German Street. Well, the uh, mayor escapade by uh, Speedy Count has uh, a well-bred mayor and has produced some other top horses. He came to the race with good credentials uh, and a uh, recent good performance, winning at uh, Louisville in his last start. The number two horse was the winner of the first elimination, and that is Continental Spirit, owned by Ed Rudner, driven by Jan Janssen. And this horse has won at Mohawk before, won the Champlain Stakes here on September the 9th. Has a definite affinity for this 5 8 mile track. He won his elimination, he won the final of the Champlain Stakes confidently, and he won very confidently uh, tonight under a, a super drive by Jan Janssen behind the uh, Team Nardine entry. He come on strong in the stretch. The number three horse is Ambro Gaylord, the only Canadian bred horse in this field, bred in Ontario, owned by Lofty Bruce of Truro, Nova Scotia, now out of New Jersey. Lofty Bruce uh, has sent out some great horses over the last few years, and uh, including a robust Hanover, his most famous. Ambro Gaylord looked very strong in the stretch, trotted home strongly, and uh, was closing in just slightly on firm tribute. The number four is uh, Petri Cosmos with... Uh, Illinois Hall of Famer Walter Paisley in the bike. This horse has a chance if he can get to the front and get easy fractions. He's by Arndon, a little hot like the Arndons, and uh, he likes to race in the front end. If they leave him alone for the first part of the race, he could be tough at the end of it. He hung uh, well in the stretch. There's Grundy's Connection, owned by Seymour and Fifth Grundy and Sid Cohen, trained by Joe Kroll and driven by Jan Nordine. This horse went the uh, toughest trip of any of the Colts in tonight's eliminations, being parked for the, uh, well, virtually the whole mile, certainly the last three quarters, and uh, stayed relatively strong in the stretch, but couldn't get by Petri Cosmos at the end of it. I don't know whether that will help him, whether it'll tighten him, or whether it'll take a lot out of him, Jim. The number six horse is King of Broline. Now, this horse is driven by Bernd Lindstedt. He's trying to make it two weeks in a row. He drove Nan's catch to victory in the two-year-old Philly trot last weekend. Well, this colt mounted a bit of a challenge uh, on a firm tribute around the last turn, but when they get into the stretch, you could see that he was all done. He was out of trot. He was on one line. He was, had his head turned out, and he was trying to bury in. I don't think he will be better the second heat. Number seven is Defiant One, owned by Ann Beisinger and Eben Duringer and trained and driven by 63-year-old Hall of Famer Howard Beisinger. Defiant One uh, has been running a bit of a temperature today, and it was a possible scratch before the race started. Again, Howard Beisinger thought about scratching him before the final, but uh, he's back. He didn't show a lot of trot when he should have in the uh, stretch in that elimination. And finally, number eight is Huggy Hanover, the only Canadian-owned horse uh, in this race. Ron Waples will drive this horse, and Huggy Hanover's had a problem with a cold as well. It seems uh, horses aren't immune to the flu that goes around at this time of year. Well, in his elimination, Jimmy seemed to be all over it, and I talked to Ronnie Waples, as, as you did, in the paddock, and he was furious with himself that he didn't pull to follow uh, Continental Spirit in that elimination. He was sure he could have been second and possibly even have won it. He was just strangling the hold at the end of it, uh, the horse at the end of it. He couldn't get through through, and he had lots of trot left, but he's got a bad post position in the final. Well, let's have a look at the current odds right now as this eight-horse field prepares for the $420,000 final that's coming up from Mohawk Raceway in Campbellville, Ontario. The series continues. We'll be back with a $420,000 final. The night the draw was made, I liked him when I saw the program earlier tonight, and you got to like the way he raced in his elimination. The horse looks super sound. He's got the number one post position. Uh, I don't know how he can get in trouble. He's the even money favorite, and uh, the crowd likes uh, our local horse, uh, Ronnie Wable's Huggy Hanover. He's fourth choice despite his eight post position. He's the fourth choice at nine to one. Well, that's a free and Canadian spirit going with Ronnie Waples, and it's hard not to, especially for the people who are so used to watching him here at Mohawk. You see the rest of the odds as Continental Spirit is getting lots of play as well. And so is Grundy's connection, the number five horse. And there's Ron Waples on Huggy Hanover, who early this morning as they had a walkabout here in the chill of the morning had a 
his head in his bucket or his own private vaporizer, so to speak, as he's had a bit of a cold as well. Well, he's fittingly enough named Huggy Hanover in a night like this, Jim. You could use some hugging to keep warm out here at Mohawk. What's, what's your selection? Well, I think I'll go with the folks here who like Ron oh, Waples yeah. and uh, the Canadian horse, Huggy Hanover. Simply the Canadian in me and the fact that I don't stand to lose an awful lot by picking that one. <laughs> We're almost set for this race as the horses move into position behind the uh, starting car. It's the $420,000. Two-year-old Colton yelling trot, and now let's go to John Craig for the call of this final. The horses are now in the hands of the starter for the 11th race. The final tonight of the Breeders' Crown for two-year-old trotting Colts and Gellings. It's post time. This field is now in motion, and there they go. The rough and trotting firm tribute drives out of the rail and moving out past Petri's Cosmos between horses. Up on the extreme outside, four wide, is a move around the far turn. Huggy Hanover, and he's going after the lead. In between horses, King of Proline trotting in second. Petri Cosmos is racing in third, and those three trotters have opened up a gap of five open lengths now to firm tribute who trots in fourth. Continental Spirit is racing in fifth off the rail in sixth, Armbro Gaylord, as they approach the opening quarter mile station. Up front now by a length and a half, that's King of Broline. Petri Cosmos is trotting in second, off the rail third, Huggy Hanover, and Firm Tribute is fourth. The first quarter is reached in 29 and 3. In front of the grandstand, King of Broline continues in front now by a length and a half. Up the rail in second as they move towards the half mile marker is Patrick Cosmos. Huggy Hanover is racing in third. Firm Tribute is fourth. King of Broline racing in fifth. Now as they move around the turn and Armbro Gaylord is trotting in sixth. Racing a seventh is defined one. At the half mile marker and by a length and a half, King of Broline by two lengths. He's there in 101 flat. Up the rail in second as they move down the back stretch. Patrick Cosmos and driving up to be third now on the outside as they approach three quarters. That's Firm Tribute. Up the rail in fourth, Huggy Hanover. Moving up on the outside in fifth as they move down the back stretch to approach three quarters is Continental Spirit. As they move down the back stretch, by an open length and a half, King of Broline. Up on the outside in second, Firm Tribute racing third to Petri Cosmos. And fourth on the outside, Continental Spirit. Huggy Hanover is locked in fifth, Armbro Gaylord is sixth on the outside, three quarters trotted and 131 flood. At the top of the stretch, King of Broline by a half a leg. On the outside, Firm Tribute is racing in second, Petri Cosmos is locked in third, and Continental Spirit is moving up fourth. Armbro Gaylord fifth on the outside. Huggy Hanover sixth down along the rail, and Firm Tribute is closing up now. Up the rail, King of Broline trotting him to the far outside. Continental Spirit on the far outside. Armbro Gaylord goes off stride, and here comes Defiant One. Defiant One in front. Well, he didn't have enough trot in the stretch of his elimination, Jim, but Defiant One certainly did in that one. I'm almost sure that he got up there. The numbers are still on the board, but uh, we can't really go by that. Uh, Defiant One trotted a storm at the end of the mile, and the veteran Howard Bysinger appears to have pulled a stunning upset in the final. And a terrific finish as they show a photo here at Mohawk. Photo win time for the mile, 201. But it appeared that best. Defiant One is the winner. Defiant won the number seven horse, uh, but it was tight. There were four of them in the photo, and uh, uh, Firm Tribute hung on strongly. King of Broline uh, set all the fractions uh, in that race and uh, stayed strong late in the stretch, and he really wore Firm Tribute down. Uh, but uh, it'll be uh, Howard Bysinger. He's turning last over there with Defiant One, and uh, he raced the sire of this horse, Defiant Yankee. He raced the grand sire of the super sire, Speedy Crown, and uh, Speedy Somali, another one of uh, Speedy Crown's great sons who sired uh, Continental Spirit. 2.01 and 4 is the winning time. And they still show a photo on the board, but it appears that Howard Beisinger and Defiant One have won this $420,000 final of the two-year-old Colton Gelding Trot from Mohawk Raceway. We'll be back with the results in a... still showing on the board, but Howard Beisinger and Defiant One, it would seem, uh, won this race, but a terrific stretch drive, and as they turn for home, 
They were four wide, or at least they were as they came up to the wire, Earl. Well, the horse uh, on the outside there went off stride between, uh, it looked like Armbro Gaylord made the break, and Defiant won uh, very confidently. Howard Beisinger just sitting there, totally relaxed. He wins it easily by half a length. And uh, how could anyone be that relaxed going for $420,000? Mm -hmm. He's done it so often, though. Here it is again, Howard Beisinger. Here's Firm Tribute getting by King of Broline right at the end. You can see Armbro Gaylord trotting up here powerfully. And uh, he can, uh, Continental Spirit right there. Armbro Gaylord goes off stride, but Defiant One sweeps past them with just about, oh, 10 feet to go. And I don't think the, uh, the photo sign is still up, Jim, but I don't think it's for win. It's probably for second and third they're trying to decide right now. And it um, appeared that Firm Tribute may have hung on. I believe it would be between uh, Firm Tribute and Continental Spirit for uh, second. And the mile two, one, and four, they came in last quarter in 30 and four fifths. Um, Howard came from a long piece back with this colt. And uh, you said before the race, this horse likes to, likes to finish. Yes, he's done that in other races. If you look at his form, particularly recently, it shows that Howard Beisinger and Defiant One have liked to come from behind. And they finally posted it, Firm Tribute in second and King of Broline. Finishing in third spot. So Howard Beisinger and Defiant One come from behind one more time and win this $420,000 two-year-old Colton Gelding Trot from Mohawk Raceway near Toronto.